He got me lingerie on sale, but it was too small. <laughs> he wanted me to hang it up and use it as motivation to slim down. <laughs> what? All right, girls, we're gonna trim that fat and tone those bodies. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science, go ahead, look it up if you want. Today, we are back into some more r slash neckbeard stories one-offs. Since it was well-received last time, I think that's a good, like, return to basics type of thing. I picked some juicy ones for you today, so let's go ahead and get on into things. Neckbeard gets his ponytail sliced. Oh my god. Did you teleport behind him? Did you say nothing personnel, kid? <laughs> Psh, nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Not a long post, but uh, it just happened five years ago. I, <laughs> I work in the construction field, so very, very rarely do I see neckbeards. And this is the first time I've actually seen one on the job. Yeah, his mommy made him go out and do something in life. You're too euphoric for college, that's fine, but you need to get a job. Pony beard. <laughs> Stay golden, pony beard. Pony beard's a skinny neck beard with a ridiculously long ponytail and patchy, puby facial hair. He's got acne and smells quite rancid and manages to piss all over the floor of whatever restroom slash porta john he goes into. Is that why he smells rancid? Because he's covered in his own fetid pee? <laughs> uh, he probably just does a shower, but the, the fetid pee doesn't help. Ponybeard is a know-it-all. Supposedly has a six-figure retirement account at the delicate young age of 26. I don't know, decent income, right investments, it's doable. <laughs> and he's generally obnoxious to any woman working in the field, complaining loudly that uh, they're invading the last boys only club, and now we can't be rude and swear anymore. Literally no one cares or bothers to be polite around me, so it's a moot point. Yeah, he's trying to make this point like preemptively. <laughs> you don't really even know this person or how she is. I did presume that OP was a dude, but that that goes to show about assumptions, doesn't it? <laughs> Ponybeard had a pretty open dislike of me from day one, but I don't really care, and likes to see if he can get a rise out of me by being blatantly misogynistic. Weird angle, but okay. <laughs> Even his own crew dislikes him and tells him to shut up. He's constantly on his phone while his co-workers around him are working, and he's been in trouble several times. The thing is, if you piss off construction workers, they aren't afraid to start a fist fight, and this dude will always take it to that point willingly, but always back out of fighting once it becomes clear that the other dude is about to seriously thrash him. Oh, he's a little wimpy worm boy. You were talking all that good shit. I, I, this is happening whether you like it or not. Like, the second or third time I see him do it, this is a favor from me to you to teach you a lesson. <laughs> uh, OP continues. I seriously don't get it, though. Neckbeards complain that women don't deserve equality because we won't work dangerous jobs like construction. And then when we do, they complain that we're taking over their men-only zones. Like, make up your mind, dudes. Yes, just like how they much love adult videos and then we'll go around and be like, that chick's loose. <laughs> it's like, dude, the only women that you've ever been able to see nude are, are loose. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. But anywho, so a couple days ago, his foreman got replaced by this full-on Alex Jones-style alt-right dude. Racist, sexist, trans, and homophonic. Homophonic, I love that. <laughs> kind of manly man. Did he tell you guys about the chemicals in the water that are making the frogs gay? <laughs> I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Uh, he's surly, and he has a lot to say about wanting to end Hillary Clinton for pizza pinball shops with a bunch of kids or whatever. <laughs> but I don't care because I get to reject his crap, so whatever. Yeah, you don't have to completely absorb the things that he says, but... Are you gonna look into it at all? Because <laughs> some of these things hold some validity. The only reason they let Alex Jones spout off about it, the only reason they haven't ended him yet, is because he does come across as, as just a wingnut. 
I also want to take this moment to apologize to the Clintons. Please don't shoot me. All right, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ponybeard manages to piss off the racist guy from the get-go by being lazy and generally a shitty worker. You guys just have one of those in your your group? You're like, yeah, he's racist. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I guess as long as he doesn't make it other people's problem. Still feels kind of weird, though. <laughs> uh, so Ponybeard can't lift a lot of the tools he's supposed to be able to handle. <laughs> and his ponytail, which is like a three-foot-long, greasy, split-ended wonder, keeps getting caught on a bunch of stuff. Dude, wrap it around his neck. <laughs> uh, it's for the best. So, what does this Fox News loving foreman do? Well, he pulls out a massive hunting knife and cuts the silly thing off. <laughs> uh, that foreman's base as hell, honestly. <laughs> I love him. Tossing the greasy tail in the beard's face and screaming at him to stop being an F.A.G. Oh, well... <laughs> Right actions, but for way the wrong reasons. <laughs> Damn it, dude. The beard backs away from him until he's out of fighting range, and then tells his foreman, hey, You're a freaking moron! I'm calling the goddamn cops! Then he runs to the superintendent's trailer. <laughs> Daddy, save me! <laughs> Five minutes later, the police show up, and arrest the foreman for assault, because cutting a person's hair off constitutes assault, I guess. And racist guy goes nuts, resists arrest by stating some made-up laws, and gets all of his weapons on him confiscated. Oh, the racist guy's the foreman? So I guess I'm giving him way too much credit for doing the one cool thing, which was cutting off a disgusting ponytail. <laughs> uh, today, some higher-ups from Ponybeard's company came and fired him in front of everyone because he had a long list of infractions and the ponytail thing was both a violation of dress code and the fact that it was a massive liability should it get caught in any machinery or something. Honestly, that end probably could have been the best. <laughs> At least his family would get some money out of the deal, you know? Not to sound callous, but can we run down a list of things he's actually providing being alive? <laughs> uh, oh, man. This was a wild one. I love the neckbeard stories that get into, like, people's jobs, you know? I've learned so much about cooking and, and being a trucker and all sorts of things just from doing this channel, and I think that's amazing. That just reminded me, we need to go back to Cringe Hospital. Okay, within the next couple days. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, uh, I'll link it on the end card, I suppose. But the end card's still miles away, <laughs> so let's go ahead and cruise on into the next story. Oh God, I dated a neckbeard. <laughs> I mean, I take these with a grain of salt. Like, to call someone a neckbeard after you dated them, there's a pretty heavy burden of proof there. But let's see what you got. <laughs> Uh, everyone knows about the friend zone and how a lot of neckbeards feel that girls don't give them a chance. Well, I gave one a chance, and if I could go back, I would slap younger me silly. <laughs> he started out okay enough. He always went on about being a gentleman. So I thought, hey, you got nothing else going on. Who, you or him? Probably both. <laughs> he told me he's a gentleman, so I guess he's a gentleman. A true gentleman never states that he is a gentleman. We'll call the beard Andrew. Pretty good beard name, honestly. <laughs> when we started dating, he was a college dropout. 25 years old, living with his parents and working at McDonald's. Yeah, I know, not a winner, but past me was lonely and stupid. I was only 19 at this time and hadn't had much dating experience. It's unfortunate that we had to start with Andrew, you know? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you gave up the whole thing then and there. Oh, dating's not worth it. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, Andrew prided himself on being such a gentleman, but his hygiene was awful. He always smelled like B.O. and smoked a pack a day. Nothing against smokers, but it didn't help his odor. I think we learned about that back in the Red Experiments, where one of our researchers, Ethan Ruff is fat, refused to take a shower for 30 days and reported the results. Turns out, not pleasant. <laughs> you should still watch the video, though. 
<laughs> uh, Andrew also never bought me a damn thing. If we went out to eat, it was fast food because that was all he could afford. And I either paid for myself or both of us. Paying for myself, totally fine. Both of us, yeah, <laughs> not every time. Andrew's a mooch, and I'm sorry you don't see it yet. How do you meet a 25-year-old living with his mom and dad and being like, yeah, I get it. In this economy? Ha <laughs> ha. But come on, can you really put a price on your own freedom and autonomy? That's a good slogan. Maybe Red X Industries should open up a real estate division. <laughs> OP says, I'm not demanding that he treat me to everything, but a lady does like to feel treated every now and then. Yes, remind your woman that she's cared for. What? What's wrong with you, Andrew? He has no aspirations. He's gonna live and die at McDonald's. And I do respect the people that, that work there because that's a, a hustle of a job. But you should be using it as a stepping stone to something greater. Anyway, <laughs> when I had to cover Andrew, he would buy so much more food than if he had to pay for it. I wanted to be the good girlfriend, but looking back, he was such a dick. <laughs> uh, I think more accurately, he'd be a dill. Like, he wants to be a dick, but he's just not real enough, you know? <laughs> uh, his eating habits were atrocious. He was easily almost 300 pounds. You don't say. And with awful hygiene? You better get some baby powder in your crevices, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, for breakfast alone, he would eat three bacon and egg cheese bagels from McDonald's. Lunch was two McDoubles and a McChicken with a large fries. He ate this way five days a week, which was basically any day he worked. He also purchased cigarettes every other day. He had money for this, but I've had to give him gas money and cover dates. Yeah, such a gentleman. I mean, addiction's a hell of a thing, but sometimes the best way to get somebody help is to tell him, nah. <laughs> Why'd you buy those cigarettes? I can't give you gas money. I'll, this the last time, and then make it the last time for real. And then, if he can't budget his money or his smokes, then on his head be it. But I guess we live and learn. <laughs> when he met my friends, he added one on Facebook. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna go well. <laughs> He's gonna hit on her within a week. They bonded over the fact that they were both pagan. I found out from her a week later that she had to block him because he kept messaging her about hooking up. She's married with a kid, by the way. Yeah, who, who didn't see this one coming? <laughs> uh, uh. Andrew's out here casting his line into every pond, seeing if he gets a bite. I guess OP was the only one desperate enough to do so and, and hang on for dear life. Why? I don't know. Because 19, you know. When I was 19, I was in the Navy in Japan. Had a pretty solid relationship. But when I got out at 22, I briefly dated like this suicide girl's webcam model. And yeah, she, she, she nuts. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I did get out before too long. Hopefully you do the same. This isn't going on for months, is it? Six months is the max. Then I have to start judging OP and looking into her history. Like, why is it like this? <laughs> anyway, as I type all this out, I feel like such a fool for letting these red flags slide. I mean, you were, but you aren't any longer. Now we know, and we ain't ever letting that happen again, right? <laughs> Say right. <laughs> so here is where it gets not safe for work. Oh good, yeah, crank the heat up on me. <laughs> he prided himself on being a dob. And I destroyed his pride by being the worst sub ever. I mean, he calls himself that. That doesn't make him that. Look at his life, dude. <laughs> it's impossible to be a dob living in the state you're living in. You need to fix yourself up a lot before you can be given complete control over another person. OP says, realistically, he just wanted to be controlling and abusive, and I didn't put up with it. I tried it because, again, I wanted to be the good girlfriend, but it was a shit show. <laughs> Being the broke-ass dill he was, he bought everything for cheap. He restrained me, I broke it. <laughs> he had a whip that somehow broke, even though he was the one using it. He got me laundry on sale, but it was too small. <laughs> he wanted me to hang it up and use it as motivation to slim down. <laughs> what? All right, girls, we're gonna trim that fat and tone those bodies. Uh, oh. 
He's getting all this stuff on Wish.com. He's getting shipped directly from Asia. He didn't know that a, an Asian double XL is like an American medium. <laughs> uh, oh. And then to tell her to hang it up uh, and slim down so she can fit into it. Oh my god. <laughs> what a ride! Uh, Andrew would yell at me when anything broke, but yeah, in reality, he just bought cheap crap. <laughs> what am I supposed to do on a McDonald's budget, huh? Uh, uh, OP says he liked to keep me blindfolded, and I didn't mind because then I didn't have to look at him. <laughs> Uh, why would you do this to yourself? Did you like him in any capacity or you just said yes because you were bored and it led to all of this? Because you were bored. Part of me presses X to doubt, but I really don't see any redeeming qualities about Andrew. There had to be something. OP ain't gonna tell us. She ain't gonna admit all that now. <laughs> Andrew always insisted on having music on. Something about uh, the senses being heightened. One day, the song stopped, and I heard why he needed sound to cover it. There was a camera click. He was taking photos of me, nude, without my knowledge. Dude, this is egregious. How many times has this happened? I'd say put him against the wall, but that might actually put him out of his misery. Can we just boots today until we learn a little bit more? <laughs> Thank you so much. I made him delete all of those pictures off his phone, but who knows what else he has. That's right, it's already been uploaded to the cloud, it's too late! <laughs> I let him keep the blindfold, but no more music. Literally the next time I heard the camera click again, I slapped him, and that was the end of the blindfold. This is ludicrous, and you're still like, yeah, we could still date though. We'll still hang out after this. <laughs> Do you not feel violated? I feel violated by proxy. I had to change what I wore around Andrew because anything was an excuse to grope me. Yeah, he doesn't even see you as a human being. It's more obvious now than ever. I used to love strapless sundresses. I only wore one once around him. He called it easy access and took advantage of how you can reach up and just slide it down. I loved wearing my hair in braided pigtails, and he called them handlebars. Ah. 25 years old, 25 year old man. I think you're the only person that's ever fucked him, OP. He doesn't know how to behave. <laughs> Honestly, looking back, I could make the claim that I was assaulted constantly by him, but it was hidden under the guise of being in a relationship and his BDSM desires. He would hold me down, and anytime I said no, well, that was just a part of the fantasy. I was stupid and young. I thought I was being a good girlfriend, and there were times I wanted it, but more often, it was forced. Being a good girlfriend doesn't require throwing your own needs out the window. You realize that, right? You existed around this man for an extended period, and I think that's punishment enough. <laughs> this is by far the grossest thing he's tried. Oh, buckle in, buckle in, everybody. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip. He told me his fantasy was to fill me up, but his regular load wasn't enough to satisfy his fantasy. Oh, God. He pulled out a jar. Oh, God. <laughs> that he'd been jerking into for God knows how long and asked to put it inside of me. Oh, <laughs> I'm dying. Oh! What the f uh, uh, Oh, God! I think I'm seriously gonna throw up. It's horrible. It's horrible! What the fuck? Uh, it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, duh. Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff, but like, oh god, dude. Every day we move farther from God's light. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, it was old and discolored. <laughs> and I wouldn't let him open the jar because I didn't even want to imagine the smell. Oh god. 
I, I can't do this anymore. I need to take a long vacation somewhere with, with sun and grass and we don't think about this anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, this happened at his parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that if I didn't get thrown out, I was marching downstairs to show them. He actually cried throwing it out. <laughs> uh, I don't know what woman is going to put your crusty old coom inside of him, but that was not happening with me. Good. You can get some sort of an effect. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. Couldn't we just play pretend or something? Like, make a substance that looks like it, but is also non-toxic and safe? No, you actually want to dump biohazard waste inside of another human being? <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore! Oh, right, you know what? Fuck it. Put him up against the wall. <laughs> That's it! You had your chance, your one chance, and you ruined it. My entire day is ruined because of that. My entire life is probably ruined because I'll never be able to forget this. Turning your girlfriend into the pony jar <laughs> is not the way, okay? Ugh. Okay, so I found out after we broke up that Andrew not only stole a pair of my underwear, but he had a whole bag of stolen panties from every one of his female friends. Bro, Andrew is a f <laughs> He's a creep of the highest level, isn't he? What is this? Do his parents know the type of horrors that they've brought into this world? <laughs> it's not too late. You started this, but you can end it. Take this butcher knife, go into his room while he's sleeping. You know what to do. <laughs> One of his friends found the underwear bag in his room, and she laid into him real good. She asked if I wanted my pair of underwear back. No, thank you. <laughs> I also found out afterwards that he lost three jobs for harassment, and many of our mutual female friends confessed to being groped by him, which he played off as a joke. Haha, ha, good joke. Why are they still friends? How has he not been run out of town on a rail? I mean, he's 300 pounds, he'd probably break the rail. But surely we can find a hill big enough to start the rolling. By the time he stops, he'll be somebody else's problem. Or maybe he'll hit the ocean and drown. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> Uh, how we broke up was absolutely ridiculous. He wanted to take me to D&D &D with his friends. Oh, we've been down this road before. <laughs> his friends was another girl who was the DM. Just the three of us at her apartment. This has all been a ruse, hasn't it? You're trying to have a threes up, aren't you? <laughs> they introduced my character, tied her up, and then spent the next hour playing sexy D&D. &D. I, I, I hate all of this. <laughs> it was so awkward watching them flirt as these make-believe characters and how they were doing it while I was tied up in a dungeon. I told him after we left how uncomfortable that made me, and I'd prefer we didn't play like that ever again. He told the DM, and she got my number from him so she could call me a disgrace to women! No you. <laughs> I told him he could keep playing sexy D&D &D or stay with me. He picked D&D, &D, and that was it. Well, thank God. Imagine how long this could have lasted if you clung to him. I hate everything that's gone on here today. <laughs> Absolutely everything. As strange as the whole situation was, I remember feeling so relieved that it was finally over. <laughs> Feelings mutual, honestly. <laughs> Let's all take a deep breath. Looking back, I was so naive, and he definitely took advantage of that. I've since started dating an amazing person, and I've been able to put this behind me, but I figured this story would serve as a good warning to other naive girls. If a guy makes you uncomfortable, but pushes that he's a good guy, and just needs a chance, follow your gut and say no. If you do give them a chance, watch for red flags, and don't be afraid to say no. Yeah, because you will definitely need to say no at multiple points. OP concludes with, I'm not looking for sympathy or anything, just wanted to share my story. What a mortifying story that has been. I have been quite literally shooketh to my core with that story. We've had some bad ones before. We've had some terrible ones before. But that, the jar of fetid fermented coom? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't move past it.
I want to leave it behind. I want to let it go, but it's just so sticky and it gets everywhere. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, uh, that was, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to recover from that. Let's try to wash the taste from our mouths with yet another story. Taste from our mouths, probably bad phrasing too. Whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's get into it. This story is called, Japanese girls would like that jumper too. <laughs> uh, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so I was shopping for groceries in the supermarket. I'm quite short, so I had to climb on the rack to reach for lettuce. And then I smelled some body odor next to me. I turned around and this lovely gentleman smiled to me and offered to get the lettuce from the highest shelf for me. He looked like the typical neckbeard, trilby, overweight, black Metallica shirt, and of course, the unshaven beard of the neck. I gladly accepted his offer. This was really nice of him. I thanked him and proceeded along my way. Yeah, it's almost a nice interaction until he starts stalking you. <laughs> I decided to bake some cookies that evening, and while I gathered some ingredients, I smelled him once again, behind me. Are you gonna bake something tonight? Yeah, I was thinking about cookies. Uh, can I come over? You have to thank me for the lettuce. Oh, are you paying for my lettuce, or you just reached up there and grabbed it one time like any decent human being would do? Now continue doing what a decent human being would do and walk away, because I'm clearly not interested. But OP doesn't lay it down quite that flat. Instead, she says, I don't think my boyfriend would like me taking home dudes to our place, said while smiling. Hint, hint. Yeah, she dropped the boyfriend, just, that's it. You shot your shot, now take your last shred of dignity and leave, please. <laughs> he walks away for a minute. <laughs> Good. And then comes back. Bad. <laughs> Get out of here, you creep! Uh, you know, I don't think he's right for you. Why is he not here to help you with grocery shopping? Does he even respect you? Oh yeah, just plant those seeds of doubt in her mind. Surely it will blossom into something fruitful. You don't even know him, much like I don't know you. <laughs> Have a good day! OP says, well, luckily you were there to help me, so thanks again. I try to laugh it off, wave him goodbye, and proceed to the pasta aisle. And then I meet him again. <laughs> it is stalking at this point. At first, I thought he pointed at my boobs, but he was pointing at my jumper with a big cute penguin on it. You know, I really like your jumper. Thank you? Japanese girls would like that jumper too. <laughs> they like cute stuff like that. Yeah, just Japanese girls as a collective whole. <laughs> oh my god, please stop. I've given you two passes. The third time I'm gonna have to spray you in the face with bear mace, okay? <laughs> OP just says, uh-huh. <laughs> Do you like Japanese stuff? <laughs> uh... Oh my god. OP says, um, it's all right. I think you would like it. How about I show you some? Are you free tonight? OP says, no. You could bake at my place. I have an oven. No, I'm going home. Come on. You should give me a chance. You know, I'm nice. No one else was helping you just now. OP, I'm going home. Have a nice evening. Eh, <sighs> sigh. I guess women don't like romantic guys anymore. Luckily, he gave up there. I got a little uncomfortable when he wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah, you were being stalked in the supermarket. And then to bring up other girls of presumably another race and make the comparison, it's just not a great look, okay? <laughs> Uh, next time we're gonna come to the grocery store, we're gonna have a, a grabber claw. So I can get all the things off the top shelf myself, and I don't need to interact with any fucking weirdos. What part of this story was romantic? <laughs> uh, I hate everything that was said here. Not as bad as the last story, but it seems the last story's in my mind. So we're gonna need one more to really get it out of there. Let's see how it goes. Pizza won't soothe my rage, my dude. Are you sure? Have you tried eating a lot of pizza? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Being into D&D &D is a mixed bag when you're a chick. Oh good, tabletop, more tabletop! A lot of these posts are reminding me of Funky Peabeard, you know? Have you guys watched that series yet? You should, it's a good one, I'll link it on the end card. Also, if you haven't liked or subscribed on the video quite yet, maybe you could, because you watched it pretty far, you know? You must be enjoying it a little bit. So come on, please and thank you in advance. <laughs> on one hand, finding nerdy chick friends is probably one of the greatest things that could happen when you walk into a comic book store. But then the other half is dudes that think you're just some magical unicorn for enjoying a hobby. This is one of those times. Fucking woo. <laughs> Hooray, let's potty. I also don't believe the split is 50-50. <laughs> I think it's like 20-80 maybe. At least according to my YouTube analytics. <laughs> uh, I'm dropping in a wee bit late to a drop-in D&D session at our friendly neighborhood comic book store. I haven't been to one of these in ages because school and work take up a lot of my time, so I was mad hyped to get my nerd on after months of neglect. Nah, do be like that sometimes though. There's a guy that goes to my church that wants to play D&D &D really bad, but I'm like, I'm, I'm cramming content. I'm a working man and a father. It's great you live with your mom and have time to do this stuff, but <laughs> I really don't. I'm sorry. It sounds good on paper, but committing like three or four hours to it, I just, I just can't. Wouldn't be prudent. Not at this juncture. <laughs> anyway, majority of the table I've already played with, and the age ranges vary from 12 to 30. Yeah, I guess the kids can enjoy some D&D. &D. 12, yeah, I, uh, it does make me slightly uncomfortable, especially considering the themes of some of the D&D shenanigans I get into. Whatever. They're running a clean game, okay? <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter. OP says, I am the only chick, which isn't a problem since all the dudes I know at the table are pretty chill. Quirky, but harmless, and honest to God, super hilarious. Most nerds are, if you can get past the quirky part. <laughs> There's a new guy, NG, from now on, and an empty seat. I take that spot with just a nod to the dude and get right into pulling out my character sheet and catching up on the half hour I'd missed. He's got a bit of chub, a minimal amount of neck stubble, and alas, is wearing a damned fedora. Well, that should have been the first sign to sit somewhere else. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if he's my age or younger because the chub is making his face look kind of babyish, but safe to assume he's younger than me. I'm 23 and like the third oldest in this group. How big's the group? Guess it doesn't matter. Once I'm settled into my seat, however, the smell finally hits me. Uh-oh, stinky. <laughs> This dude next to me smells like a mix between old toe jam and stale piss. Oh, that links us back to the first story. It's amazing. Life is so cyclical in a way. <laughs> uh, okay, really gross, but whatever. I'll just lean away from him and buddy up closer to the brosif who's playing the bard. He's not going to let you hide forever. Eventually, he's going to speak to you. Just move. Sit somewhere else. Nip it in the bud before it even starts, okay? <laughs> New guy doesn't do much for the first half of the game, unless he's describing combat, so I honestly just forgot about him for a while. We call for a lunch break, and I leave to grab a coffee with my D&D bestie, who we'll call Bangers. I'm not gonna call him that shit, I'll call him Bestie. <laughs> As we're grabbing some delish mochas, Bestie says, Hey, bet you five bucks new guy's gonna try and make a move on you. Dude, easy five bucks. <laughs> OP says, dude, no way. He won't do anything. He hasn't said a word this whole time. Bestie, come on. His eyes were practically skull banging you. My boy isn't one for subtlety. Also, if we were doing the skull banging thing, wouldn't her eyes have to be? Never mind, it's fine. OP just says, um, no. No. Little Jerry Seinfeld for you. <laughs> Bestie says, sucks to be you. Not as much as you'd think, actually. <laughs> so we head back, and it turns out new guy had bought the whole group a pizza. Super cool of the dude, but now I'm a little more wary and keeping an eye on him. Because of the pizza? Probably not. Probably because of what Bestie said. The pizza was a way to get her defenses down, but Bestie gave it a heads up, so the defenses is like doubled. Anyway, OP says, I sit back down, chug a lug in on my heavily caffeinated drink, and I noticed that, oh yeah, this dude is staring. 
Want your bad romance? <laughs> As I start up a conversation with Bestie about starting up another campaign with our group once school wraps up, new guy seems to find the courage to speak to the illustrious only woman at the table. Oh good, I'm sure you're not going to make it super weird. New guy, hey, did you want any pizza? OP, oh, dude, thanks, but I'm good. Bestie, I'll take hers. New guy completely ignores Bestie and says, Are you sure? It's all right if you didn't pitch in. <laughs> you could just owe me one. Wink. Wow, that's fucking awesome. You think I'm going to blow you for a slice of pepperoni? <laughs> I'm good, bro. <laughs> uh, OP says, Um, no. <laughs> I'm not hungry. Especially after that. Ugh. GM calls for the game to start, and we're ready to go, and I think the matter is over and done with. He was a little pushy, I guess, but whatever. He'll get over it, but no. Oh no. It's happening. Why is it happening? How do we stop it from happening? <laughs> GM is mid-sentence with setting up the baddies we're gonna fight, when new guy, not liking that my attention is no longer focused on the riveting pizza debacle, just dropped some sauce and grease-covered pizza right in front of me. You know what else was in front of me? My goddamn character sheet! Now I'm mad! And this was greasy pizza! <laughs> uh, I don't think he eats any other kind. The amount of oil on this pizza was just gross! And this dude for sure ordered extra sauce because that splat that sounded when he dropped it was almost deafening in the silence that followed. OP? Holy shit, dude, what the f- I said I didn't want any! New guy? Yeah, but that's what women do, though. <laughs> they say they don't want any, but you probably want some once I start eating mine. <laughs> I'm just saving us the trouble of going through that nonsense. It's not, it's not a couple french fries, dude, it's a slice of pizza. Now this dude is trying to act like he's doing me a favor! The shit? I'm definitely going to kill you. <laughs> uh, he would deserve it. Not as much as Andrew did. But still, I mean, I hate to sound cold-blooded, but what would the actual net loss be? Not much, if anything. <laughs> GM is now trying to defuse this situation. New guy, she said no. Don't throw it onto a character sheet. I hand the gross pizza to Bestie while trying to wipe off as much ick as possible with my shirt sleeve. New guy doesn't seem to like that. New guy, wait, that slice was for you. Yeah, you gave it to me and I gave it to Bestie. <laughs> uh, OP not looking up because I'm pretty much done with this guy and I don't want it. New guy, fine, sorry I cared. Oh, boo hoo for you, you crying in the rain, pally. GM looks a little miffed at the half apology, but just waves it off because we all want to get back to what we actually came here for. Time skip! Oh, fortunate. <laughs> Game's done and we're all packing up. I'm ignoring new guy because I'm petty and hey, I didn't get an apology, so I'm allowed to be salty. Bestie heads off to check out some of the merch and I start rewriting my character sheet because there's no way I'm gonna keep the pizza stained one and have it stinking up my bag. I get about halfway through my sheet when new guy appears behind me. New guy, you're rewriting your character? Just tell him to go away. <laughs> That's the easiest way to, to end this. I don't wanna speak to you, please leave me alone. But OP instead says I'm just copying it onto another page. I don't want my character sheet to have pizza stains on them. Nice guy. <sighs> I'm sorry you didn't like that I offered you free pizza. He doesn't even understand why he's wrong, does he? <laughs> I'm not in the mood for a fight, so I just ignore him. This displeases him, so he tries for a different tactic. Nice guy. Hey, it's a cool way to tell our friends how we met though, right? Uh-huh. That's how I meet most of my girlfriends, <laughs> accidentally pissing them off. Funny. Uh, so when are you free? At this point, OP's starting to wrap her stuff up. I ain't sticking around for this, she says. I don't know. 
I leave the table, no goodbye or anything, and head for the door that Bestie is waiting at. New guy is following close behind. Ooh, what are you doing that for? <laughs> New guy, you should probably give me your number then, so you can tell me when you do know when you're free. He's getting snarky, probably sensing that I'm not feeling it, but still pushing? Jesus Christ, dude. Please leave me alone! Again, I just ignore him and walk past Bestie and New Guy's stupid face, e and out the door. As we're walking up the street, Bestie's laughing like a lunatic and myself just seething with discomfort. We hear the following behind us. New Guy, hey, well, screw you then! See if I ever offer you anything ever again! Yeah, because I can't afford to buy my own pizza. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, I was five bucks short that day and apparently not worthy of any more pizza offerings from this most gracious neckbeard. Oh, woe is me. That pizza sounds terrible. It's like a you went to Little Caesars and bought a pie and expected everybody to start clapping. Like, yeah, I guess it's food I can eat, but it's not really the pinnacle, is it? Just because you choose to do all that shit with your body doesn't mean I'm going to do the same for mine. Although I do think I have some cold pizza in the fridge. I'm going to eat it right after this video. Pizza time. And hey, friends, if you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to link Funky P Beard on the end card, just like I said. I know you'll love it. It's full of cringe. Although nothing has made me audibly gag quite like Andrew and his jar. <laughs> I hope you'll always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut him open. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine.